is Debbie Wish, and I'm from Innovation Minds. As head of global development and customer success, it's my honor to be joining our strategic partner, CGI, and you for this year's Global Innovation Ecosystem Summit. Um, for the next two hours, approximately, we've brought you a great workshop. Uh, we have four of Innovation Minds' top strategic collaborators and bright minds in innovation. I'm going to be introducing to you uh, them to you momentarily, but let me just say they serve as founders and CEOs of their Innovation Senior Leadership Advisory Services and Master Facilitators in Innovation Design Thinking, Creative Problem Solving, and Helping Enterprises become um, to, to set the stage for becoming both culturally ready and strategically ready to innovate. So let me tell you about who we have who will be entertaining and educating and um, speaking with you today. First, we have Bala, Bala Subramaniam. Bala is an author. You, you all can wave as I say your name if you like. Um, Bala is an author, avid blogger, keynote speaker at summits focusing on innovation, HR, strategy, and digital transformation. He's championed corporate innovation initiatives for eBay, PayPal, and LinkedIn, global brands. Bala founded Innovation Minds, which provides the ultimate innovation management platform to optimize the creative talent and exclusive Six Thons innovation framework to nurture a creator culture within enterprises and institutions. Our first guest after Bala will be Victor Assad. Victor is an author, speaker, and co-founder of Innovation One. Innovation One, as you'll learn from Victor, is the creator of the Innovation One Health Index. It's a scientifically developed assessment to measure, benchmark, and improve a company's culture and capability to innovate and drive results. He will be enlightening us on emerging practices of highly innovative organizations in the digital age. Next up, we'll have Gary Covert. A smile and a wave, thank you. Um, Gary is an executive advisory coach and founder of Gary Covert Consulting. He's worked with key leaders in some of the most admired companies, high potential critical decision makers who work in complex, fast paced environments with demanding stakeholders. The leaders who work with Gary regularly report improvements in profit, accelerated drive, for results, higher functioning teams, and significant growth in individual and leadership effectiveness. He'll be speaking to you today about top innovation leadership interferences. Following Gary, you'll get the opportunity to meet Susanna Childers. Susanna is the founder and creator of Possibility for her company, AHA. Susanna is an international speaker on insight, leadership and innovation, recently presenting at the Creative Problem Solving Institute in Buffalo, New York, Mind Camp Canada in Toronto, and the African Creativity Conference in South Africa. Today, Susanna is going to engage us all in an interactive exercise around the initial steps of design thinking. And lastly, Bala will uh, take it back to take you through a hands-on exercise to experience the power of total innovation and an engaging innovation management platform. Thank you again for joining us. Hi there. If I can uh, ask uh, everybody to go ahead and go on mute if you haven't already, it will be much appreciated. And then just a couple quick um, housekeeping items and then I'm going to hand it over to Bala to begin our workshop. So uh, just if uh, what I, I think you're probably all accustomed to the Q&A and the chat windows in Zoom, if I might ask you, if you have questions, please put your questions into the chat window. We'll have an opportunity to take a, question, a couple questions in between speakers. And then those questions that we don't get to, and I know there will be more that we can't get to, unfortunately, than we can, we will follow up with um, uh, together with the audio and video and answers to the, top, to the questions presented. All right, Bala. So now if I can ask you to take it away. Thank you, Debbie. That was a great introduction. Uh, very quickly, Imran, I know that uh, folks are sitting there in the room, right? Maybe somebody should act like a facilitator. There are any questions from the auditorium? Uh, 
please try to triage it to the Zoom. Otherwise, uh, it'll be a little bit tough for them to share their opinion or point of view. So with that, so it is pretty good morning here in uh, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, and uh, pretty packed uh, agenda, really exciting event. Without further ado, why don't we just get on to this one? Let me go ahead and then share my screen. And then we'll go from here. Let me adjust my volume here. Okay. First of all, uh, welcoming you all to this uh, Innovation Minds and CGI Summit. You know, we are all meeting in the interesting uh, intersection of time frame, right? Uh, we are having all this COVID situation. It's a new normal. There are so many exciting things going on. At the same time, it is a challenging time. So uh, I do have a friend in Hollywood. Uh, when I was talking to him casually on one day, he was telling me that, Bala, do you realize that in the olden times, only two types of stories came from Hollywood movies. It's, I would say that most of the movies are falling into those two types. I was curious with him, like, what are those type of uh, stories? And then he told me that the first type of the story is more towards the stranger comes to town. So how many of you have seen the good, uh, bad, uh, ugly, or any of those cowboy movies? It's a pretty popular type of movies, right? And when you recall those kind of movies, the stranger, or most of the time, the villain comes to a village, and then he is trying to do all the damages, and then the villagers are going to be scratching the head. How should we really counter this evil force that's coming on us? So that is the first type of the story. And then there is also another type of the story that he was talking about, which is man is going on a journey. So this is another type of the story like mechanist gold and there are so many things, right? And the story goes like this. You go on expedition and then you're trying to get into these uncharted territories and uh, go towards a mission vision eventually you're going to be finding the gold. So again, two type of stories, right? The one is stranger comes to town. And then the other one is man goes on a journey. So when you're comparing this with where we are now, it is a perfect kind of synergy that you'll be able to see here. Man, man comes to town, it is more like innovation happens to you. In this case, COVID comes to our nations and then we are trying to scratch our head how we are going to be conferring that one. When you put that same into the enterprise context or institutional context, you are thriving in your uh, company and also the business is going good and uh, you're happy. And you're not really focusing on your side view mirror or rear view mirror and there is a huge disruption coming on your way. And if you're not going to be really paying attention, they are going to be knocking you out and then you're going to be going out of business very quickly. So if you are letting other innovations happen to your business, your ideas, and you're not really taking the charge, the point is that you're going to be going out of business pretty soon. Whereas on the other side, man goes on a journey. So you really actually take your courage and then try to go and venture into these uncharted territories. End of the day, you're going to be getting the, goal, right? the same way when it comes to enterprises or institution or even those aspiring innovators out there. You should always try to be staying ahead of the curve. You should be the one in the driving seat and then trying to innovate. If you're going to do it, others are going to follow you. So again, these are all just two scenarios, right? Either innovation is happening to you and then hit you and then you're going to be going out of business, or you're going to be in the driving seat and you're going to be telling the whole world that, hey, this is the new way of so my request and also recommendation coaching to each and every one of you out there, try to go for 
making the innovation rather than trying to follow the group. So that is our first mantra here. And then I'll move on to the next one. In the meantime, can you all go on mute? There is a bit of background noise there. Even before getting into the conversation here, can you just do a little bit of a team exercise? You can all use the Zoom chat. Can you tell us what does the word innovation mean to you? Maybe Debbie, if you can see the chat and then read us what kind of feedback we are receiving from the audience. Someone is telling you that, hey, I'm working on an innovation. What comes to your mind? How do you define innovation in one or two words? Any thoughts? Creativity, I Creativity. see. Creativity, awesome. Uh, feel free to use the chat window and then try to share. How do you define innovation from your own perspective? It could be two words, three words, or you can come up with a big essay also. That's fine, but we can't read everything. Okay, let me tell you what I'm seeing here, Bala. Disruptive and creative ways to address the same problem. Novel awesome. and useful. Mm -hmm. Invention, commercial, commercialization. Awesome. So those are all pretty good ideas, right? So I'm also having a point of view and most of our leadership team here, they're having a point of view. But before we get into that, I would like to share one uh, good friend of mine. His name is Hugh McClard. Uh, he is the innovation artist and he has been doing a lot of coaching for enterprises starting from Microsoft, Google, and uh, he has a pretty interesting way of describing what innovation is. Let's play this small uh, video here, which is going to be like 30 seconds or 40 seconds, and then come back to this conversation. So are you all ready? What do you all think? So many interesting perspectives, right? So innovation should happen on the edges. Innovation is a mindset. Don't follow the path. Try to create your own ways. Such a beautiful expression. So uh, before getting into that, that's why we are here to make a dent in the universe. I'm sure that most of you would recall that this is the statement Steve Jobs was giving when he was introducing MacBook back in the 80s. So such a visionary, right? So he had the conviction and uh, he was seeing through like 30 years ahead, 40 years ahead, and he made a bold statement that I'm here to make a dent in the universe, and he did it. So that is the kind of conviction, clarity, and also the belief in your ideas is going to take you all the way to the finish line. If not, you're going to make a dent in the universe. Why not we make a dent in the small part of the world like Pakistan or Middle East or wherever that you're living, whichever the industry that you're working at. So that is the whole point of uh, being the innovator, the fun of being the innovator. And then if you ask me, how do you define innovation? I would say that innovation is a mindset. As long as you are challenging the status quo in a constructive and positive way, and then exploring all the possibilities of how you can do the same thing in a much more efficient way, innovative way. That's where the innovation comes. Just keep having the curiosity and have all those beautiful questions like, how come, why not? You go to Starbucks and try to see something happening on the point of sale and you're using the credit card. 
don't just be the kind of passive participant there. Try to actively listen and also observe. And that's where you're going to be having all these questions. Yeah, this is good, but I can just improve it in such a way. That is the whole point of being the fun of this innovator, right? So with that, let me quickly introduce you the Silicon Valley and then hand it over to my friend, Victor here. You know, we are all coming from Silicon Valley. Most of us worked uh, here for a few years and then branched out our own uh, venture. Uh, we are always being asked that question like, hey, uh, what is the magic sauce of the Silicon Valley? The culture is a little different. Can you just tell us how they are able to really create all this kind of momentum and leading the world when it comes to innovation and all those things? So if you ask me, I can sum all those things into three or four traits, I would say. The first one is the professional network and as well as cultural diversity. I'll start with cultural diversity, then to the professional networks. You know, uh, Silicon Valley, especially California, is the land of dreamers, right? So diversity, there is no scarcity in terms of diverse opinions and the point of view and all those great things here. On the other side, if you look into most of our professionals weekends here, you can't just find anyone who is not having a meetup session or going for an even right. They're always kind of clustering together and trying to share the ideas. That is how they're able to really move forward with those ideas by collective brain power and conversation and all. And of course, we are surrounded by all these top class universities. That's where the talent is kind of coming from, right? One side Stanford, UC Berkeley, I can go on and on. And again, high concentration of venture money. So there is a proverb, right? Uh, you should uh, search or you should try to find where you lost it. So that is what actually venture capitalists are doing here. So they have a lot of money. One or two companies, when they're investing, they may or may not be able to be successful. But again, they will continuously invest on it. And sometime and one day, they're going to be getting into the unicorn. So the concentration of venture money is really helping these innovators to get the firepower they need. Uh, finally, this is actually one thing that's really, really helping Californians. If you're working for Google and then you would like to go and start your own company, there is no non-compete clause really preventing you from doing such that. So if you just go outside California, some of the US states are having that non-compete. That's really, really kind of bringing down that innovation and also venturing out. And then finally, the spirit of cooperation. What I mean by that here is, if you're having an idea, try to go and talk to your friends and then get their opinion. So the more and more you're trying to have the kind of conversation, only when the collective minds are really vetting those ideas and challenging in the right way and then telling you about the blind spots you may have and what are the other perspectives that you should keep in mind, you'll be able to take the ideas to the next stage on the other side if you're thinking like oh this is my idea this is my baby i'm not going to be sharing with anyone you'll not be able to get those kind of diversified perspectives so that is the beauty of silicon valley here nobody is going to be holding back their idea to their own they always go and share what they are trying to do and why they are trying to do but the good thing is they won't tell you how they are going to be implementing it because that's a secret sauce if you are an innovator, which you are all, and when you have an idea, go and talk to most of your friends and then try to get their opinion. The only thing is don't share how you're going to be implementing it because on the planet of 7 billion people, everybody will be having an idea. It is not just having the idea is going to make you the successful innovators. Who is actually getting that idea to the finish line by believing in persistently and also in a perseverant way, they are the one going to be making the history in the world, right? So my recommendation to you all is that go and talk to your friends, really actually bring in all these perspectives along the way, you may be able to find a lot of support and the cheerleading and one day you're going to be getting your idea to the finish line. So with that, let me hand it over to my friend Gary here. Gary, it's your show. Debbie, oh, you thank you so, 
Yes, thank you so much, Bella. Actually, uh, we're handing it over to Victor, in fact. Thank you so much, uh, again, Bella, for um, kicking it off. And now, Victor, if I can hand the mic to you, we'd love to hear your presentation. Terrific, yes. And um, let's see, I have to have my presentation. There it is. Let me pull that up there. <clears throat> And um, excuse me for a second, it went to the wrong screen. So let me uh, pull it up. Uh, so hopefully what you should see here, there it is, it's in presentation mode. So yes. good evening to all of you in uh, Pakistan and to my colleagues here in the United States. It's a pleasure to be with you. My name is Victor Assad. Um, I'm a managing partner of Innovation One, and we are all about working with organizations to create a culture of innovation, which is very transformative. It's very cult, um, <clears throat> collaborative. Uh, it is, it's all about sharing, as Bala had spoken about, and increasing an organization's capability and culture to be innovative and the success of the organization. What I'm gonna be speaking with you about in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes or so is our most recent report that we published with the conference board. It's called Useful and Emerging Practices of Highly Innovative Organizations in the Digital Era. And when we began the research for this in uh, 2019, surveying members of the conference board and our followers, nobody knew anything about COVID-19. The world was not changing so dramatically as it is now. And so as we've begun to speak about this in different speaking engagements, we, we uh, to kind of speak to the times, we talk about reinventing innovation in times of crisis, lessons from leading companies. And so I'm gonna go through this research with you and show you how is it that companies become innovative, remain innovative and become leaders in their domains, in their industries. And we also work with organizations in the public sector and government agencies to help them learn these same lessons. So it's my uh, pleasure to present this to you. And uh, I'm gonna start by uh, talking here, um, as we began to get ready to publish this in, um, uh, in the early part of this year, we began to say to our audiences, let's, let's take a look back at recent history because we began to talk about this in April when COVID-19 had already begun to infect people around the world. And we said, we're gonna take a look back to recent history, just January, 2020, when CEOs of companies across the world said in January of 2020 that innovation is a top priority. And in a survey by the conference board, CEOs were asked, how, they, how do they see the world in 2025, five years from now? And again, this is before COVID-19. And their answer is that there will be constant change, that CEOs are going to have to stay ahead of, this, of these changes that come not only from technology, but socioeconomic trends, uh, global economic trends and trends that we will never see, so-called black swan events. Boy, how prophetic all that was. So innovation remains an essential priority. And with COVID-19 and all the changes to business and government and so on, you know, necessity is a mother of invention. And so innovation is particularly important now. And in normal times, we would say to companies and to organizations in the public sector or the government sector, that highly innovative companies, they have higher growth, higher profits than those that are non-innovators. And our research shows that, there's research of others that shows that it's really pretty uh, a common finding by anyone who does this research. And these companies enjoy better stock market performance when they're publicly traded and it's really essential for survival. When I speak with executives who might be fearful about trying to become more innovative, I remind them 
that the most risky strategy is to maintain the status quo. That will ensure your failure as an organization. Well, let's take a look at how we measure innovation. And in this report we did for the conference board, what we found about highly innovative companies. What you see on your screen is the Innovation One Health Index. And it's kind of represented here as the top of a light bulb. And what you see in the green line that's on the outside of, of uh, the circle here are the scores of highly innovative companies. And what you see on the inside, the low innovators are the low innovators. And this is against the Innovation One Health Index. And what you quickly can see is that high innovators score substantially higher across all 12 drivers of innovation over the low innovators. And we describe that phenomena, which is very common, as these high innovators treat innovation as a strategic imperative. It is just as important to them as the financial plan, their sales plan, their technology plan. It's incredibly important and their executives get involved with it. Their exec executives have a strategic vision for innovation where they wanna take the company and they talk about it so often with their employees and their external partners that they get nauseous talking about it. They get tired of talking about it. And I tell them, when you reach that state that you're tired of talking about it, that's success, because that's communicating your strategic vision. So what does this represent? Well, first off, the Innovation One Health Index was developed by my partner, Dr. Brooke Dobney. After <clears throat> uh, 15 years of research, and he's published over 20 peer-reviewed academic journals on innovation and business strategy. So this is based on great research, great statistical analysis, and has been borne out in the process of publishing academic journals. And there's 12 factors that drive innovation. One is that a company has a strategic vision for it and goals for it, and they tell everybody, just like Bala said in Silicon Valley, you tell everyone because you, you want to develop networks and collaborators, not only with your employees, but also with your external partners. With employee connectivity, you invite employees to get involved. I want you employees to resonate with our vision, to get involved, to recommend ideas, to collaborate with each other. And that means you have to have managers at the team level that will encourage questioning and innovation. The executives change their strategic infrastructure, their strategic planning. And I'll talk about that because that's one of the five sub-themes that we'll explore. But basically they go from an action-oriented infrastructure moving away from too much planning. They wanna take action quickly. They invest in employee skills and opportunity. And, and they invest not only in the skills to do your job, but the learning that the whole organization is experiencing about innovation, what fails and what succeeds. Certainly they invest in labs and they invest in early innovation, whatever technology they need and digitization, but they invest in employee skills and opportunity learning or what we some might call a culture of learning. And that really speaks here to organizational learning. It's really sharing what your successes are, your failures, so everyone learns from it. And the latest new technology and market trends and competitive information. They share technical and financial support. And down here with these three, knowledge generation, knowledge transfer, and knowledge decision making, they set up well-known processes for everyone to recommend idea, for others to build on it, to experiment, prototype, to propose the idea to the company, and for the company to have fast decision making processes based on data. They certainly get their employees engaged in what they're doing, but this is really about empowerment. And they empower their teams and their project managers, project managers to do what they need to do to be innovative. And the top executives learn to be hands off, not to overly interfere, but to be empowering. 
Idea management is how you manage these ideas that are talked about in knowledge generation and transfer, how you pick from the best, how you move forward with it. And this here is alignment. And Bala spoke about this earlier. We call the alignment the graveyard of innovation. And this is where you have a great idea to commercialize or if you're in the public sector to bring to the public, but it gets, it gets killed by your current operations that are too busy with their current sales plan or making what they're making or doing what they're currently doing, which is important. But highly innovative companies learn to manage both and it's very easy to do. So that's the Innovation One Health Index. We see that highly innovative companies score higher than the lower, lower innovators or non-innovators. And this is all statistically significant. It's not by chance. And so let's explore these five sub-themes of innovation. The first one is that highly innovative companies go from strategic planning, which, which is strategic planning is a process. And they go from a process that in some companies may take six, year, six months, and then they start it over again in six months, and it takes a lot of time. They go from that to being strategic action. A little less planning and making decisions about what they're going to invest in tomorrow, next quarter, six months from now, next year. And they keep revising that. They keep moving but the orientation is on strategic action. And so they have a long-term focus around their vision, but a short-term focus on let's get moving on this. What are the first things we need to do? What are the early winners? Let's get moving. They're always looking at their analytics and what are their analytics reveal to them? What are the early signs of disruption? We knew, we saw the early signs of disruption about COVID-19. Unfortunately, too many governments ignored it. They look for the early signs of disruption in technology, socioeconomic trends, black swan events. And again, they ask themselves, what can be done today, this quarter, next quarter, next year? And it's not just adding new things to do, they have to take away from old things to do because they can't overload their workforces and their leaders. That's the first trend. The second one is that they create these the high innovators create these highly innovative cultures that are very transparent. The executives share what they know. They talk about their strategic vision. They're very collaborative and they have very agile cultures and agile organizational structures. And so the executives tell everyone, we want you involved to suggest ideas. And they make known a well-known process to suggest ideas. We've often done this, you know, in having hackathons and, and group meetings and so on. This now can be done and is increasingly done in the remote work area using digital, digital platforms. And there's great platforms to manage innovation, to allow people to innovate. Gary's going to take you through a process here soon on whiteboarding to collect those ideas and move them forward. That's what these companies do in the digital era. They invest in employee skills and organizational learning. Managers invite innovation at the team level. This is not tops down management. This is here's what we need to do. We need to stay focused to our strategies, but tell us how to do it better. Tell us how to do it better. And the people in HR who are listening, I'm an HR guy, they change their performance management systems to reward innovation, reward ideation, reward collaboration, not just do what I tell you. Highly innovative companies expect that 30 to 40% of the goals of their organization are going to fail. That's innovation. Now, certainly in meeting customer commitments, you make all those. But in innovation, it's what did we learn today from today's failure? What's tomorrow's experiment? And then they also attract to themselves the talent they need to be innovative and give them the culture to be innovative. They measure their innovation, it's critically important. They measure what's working, what's not, and tell others. And they shield the organization from the disruption of innovation. They keep funding their best bets so that the organization moves forward. A quick chart here from our study, you see here about 
nine different factors that we measured. The high innovators are in blue, in orange are the low innovators, and I'm just gonna talk about three of them. You can see the big difference of high innovators from low innovators on this 10 point scale in developing a strong culture of innovation. The next highest one was implementing digital tools and learning how to implement them and then putting in place measures to measure innovation, critically important. The third factor is that high innovators succeed with these methodologies and technologies and they're digitizing everything they can. So certainly they prototype, but these days they can use analytical tools, big data analysis to, to see what they're learning and to do more, uh, to, to move more quickly. Again, they have these strong innovation cultures. They do a lot of agile methodologies and Gary's gonna talk about that more. They use design thinking. They use stage gating methodologies, particularly if they're in the aerospace business or big pharma, medical device, biotech, where you have to keep track of what's uh, failed and succeeded to show the regulators. Big data analytics powered by AI, I can't say enough of that. And the project management software to keep track of these ideas, which ones are building momentum, which ones are meeting their goals, and which ones to move forward. Number four is that they get their external partners together. And they, they move beyond their hierarchies and boundaries. So a lot of organizations have hierarchy, they have boundaries, and they need them. They have to have some controls over the organization. But what they learn to do is not to let these boundaries and their bureaucracy get in the way. So they involve their supply chain, their customers, incubators, universities, and thought leaders. And so when you look at these four pyramids, they're just not talking with people from team to team that are near them, but teams maybe in another region of the country or the world that are in their organization and reaching out to other organizations who they in turn reach out to other organizations. So they move beyond their boundaries and they reward this. Very important. The fifth one is the need for an integrated approach to innovation and to measure what is going on. Now, my friends at the conference board have a document that they've published, the signposts of innovation. Now, certainly you have to measure your innovation project against your milestones. How is your new technology working? But organizations that are real successful at that, they have all sorts of measures within their research and development within how well they're implementing new digital tools and software. Because 87% of digita digitization efforts fail because their culture rejects it or they have bad project management of their innovation tools. That's critically important. They're looking at innovating around uh, environmental and social sustainability about the brand and customer experience. At the end of the day, you gotta, this has to help your customer or your clients or the public if you're in the public sector. What's the impact and how do you know that you're making a good impact? Of course, the internal innovation culture, that's what we're about at Innovation One and the external innovation ecosystem. Where are they getting the best ideas? What university, what accelerators, what incubators? And so that is critically important. So a quick summary against the Innovation One Health Index, we see that high innovators treat innovation as a strategic imperative. Low innovators, not so much. They're kind of betting on a big bet technology, but it won't succeed in most cases unless they have that supportive collaborative culture for innovation and innovation is strategic as treated as a strategic imperative. They turn <laughs> into action, they're agile, they nurture an open, collaborative, transparent culture. They successfully innovate using these methodologies that I've mentioned, prototyping, experimentation, stage gating, big data analysis, uh, with powered by AI and also project management software. They engage their external ecosystem. They talk, like Bala said, they talk about what they want to do, but they keep some of their secret sauce, but they need to get the ideas from others and they measure what they're doing and they make fast, fact-based decisions rapidly. So Debbie, I think I've uh, probably up against my limit there, sorry, if I'm a minute long. 
I had to ring the bell. I'm so sorry, but at least it was a nice sound, was it not? You know, I never heard it, so hopefully I didn't run long. <laughs> so, I was on a roll. Ah, uh, thank you so much. That was very interesting. As always, Victor, we really enjoyed your presentation. I thought it was jam-packed full of information. Uh, if anybody has questions, please, again, don't hesitate to put it into the chat window. Um, Imran, I'm not sure how you might engage the room there. Uh, perhaps they are on Zoom. Uh, if they are, that is terrific, maybe from their mobile devices. Uh, and then they can ask their questions as well. Uh, looks like we can uh, move right on. I'll just comment on Amir's uh, comment in the chat window. He mentions that innovation is one of the most effective tools for entrepreneurs. It certainly is. Uh, Amir, thank you for contributing. And looks like we have a couple representatives that have signed on from Gina University for Women in Karachi, Pakistan. Welcome. Okay, great. Well, I think then let's go ahead and move on to Gary Covert. Uh, Gary, if you mind, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and hand the mic to you so you can begin uh, your, your presentation for the team and for the group. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Debbie. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Victor. Uh, excellent uh, uh, presentation. Uh, so I'll kind of uh, follow on that. Uh, Victor gave, a, I think, a very great view of, uh, I'll be talking about interferences, primarily on the leadership level, but Victor really uh, showed the uh, academic uh, point of view and uh, you know, the research base of why uh, uh, organizations may not uh, innovate as effectively as they can, and certainly made a compelling business argument as to why we should. So uh, my name is Gary Covert. I work with uh, senior leaders across uh, many different kinds of industries. Uh, Gay, uh, Debbie already gave me uh, a, a brief introduction. But yeah, I, so I work with leaders and uh, their senior leadership team primarily on these issues around culture and effectiveness and uh, prioritization and sometimes uh, working with them uh, on their, their, own, their own issues uh, as a leader and help them uh, be the very best leader that they can uh, to drive these kinds of initiatives. So let me, I'm gonna do something a little bit different and I'm gonna share my screen. And what I'm sharing with you right now is a white space within the Innovation Minds platform. So in a little bit, uh, Susanna and Bala will take you through or invite you to uh, do some ideation within, a, within this uh, tool but I wanted to use a small part of the tool that's a white space, because one of the things that uh, is just critical, as you're saying with uh, innovation leaders, is digitization first. That's a big thing. Uh, going digital first and not second. So, and the second thing is to be very collaborative. We have to be able to have um, a methods by which we can work with each other uh, very quickly and very effectively, uh, no matter where we are. And uh, COVID has certainly uh, interfered uh, with a lot of things. So it's made tools like this uh, that much more uh, important. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through a couple of my, my slides, uh, you know, my PowerPoint slides, but I just put them in here. And uh, then I'm going to invite some of my uh, other people, uh, you know, Debbie and some others uh, to kind of uh, do a, a little exercise with me. But you can see this is a white space. You can do all sorts of different things. And this is based on the CGI uh, innovation uh, platform that we've set up. So first, let's talk about uh, the conditions for successful change. There are really only three, if you think about it, whether you're uh, trying to be um, uh, better in terms of our health, you know, being more fit and healthy, or whether you're trying to be a, a more innovative company. Uh, here, we, you know, everybody knows Amazon one of the biggest uh, worldwide uh, uh, retailers in the world, but used to be Sears, at least in the US, a very innovative company. So uh, they need to, you know, th these three disciplines apply to whether you're trying to stay uh, as an innovator or like uh, your current uh, uh, activity that you're trying to do to create uh, 100,000 startups and a million innovators. 
So there's really three con uh, conditions for to make this uh, successful change. And these are having the conviction to change, the discipline to change, and the aptitude to change. Conviction means we really, really think it's important. Uh, we really believe that it's uh, going to be beneficial for us and we just have a high degree of certainty that we need to do this. That's important. Second is we have to have the discipline. That means our internal resources to be able to stick with it when things get hard and they always get hard. And then lastly, we have to have the aptitude, which means we have to have a skill, a plan, a method uh, by which we're going to do it. And if we lack even one of the three, we're going to have an issue. So uh, if we lack conviction, even if we have discipline and aptitude, our change efforts may not be very effective because we'll be uh, a little delayed or a little weak in our start, uh, that sort of thing. If, we're, if we lack discipline, even if we have the conviction and aptitude uh, to change, uh, we won't uh, do it consistently. And we all know that consistency is the key to effective uh, results over time. And likewise with aptitude, if we lack aptitude, even if we have the conviction to change and the discipline to change, if we don't know how to do it uh, as an organization, uh, we might just kind of be overwhelmed. We don't know where to start uh, and that sort of thing. Or if even if it's with our health, uh, we might you know, uh, be kind of overwhelmed with all the choices. Well, maybe I should be running every day. Maybe I should eat a totally different diet every day. But if we just don't stick on a certain thing that's going to prove to work, we're not going to make the, the uh, changes that we uh, want to make. So these are all the preconditions for successful change. And it's interesting. These work at an individual level. These work at a company level. And these also work at a very aspirational level. What I, my observation and your observation may be different uh, is that when we're looking at um, new innovators, let's say people who are just thinking, gee, I'd like to start my own company. Maybe they're one of these 1 million aspirational uh, innovators. Their issues are not going to be around conviction. They really want it. Uh, they're likely not going to be around discipline, but they may be around aptitude because they just don't know where to start. So if you're helping those kinds of uh, innovators trying to get uh, get started, you might want to think about aptitude, which is giving them the processes and tools, methodology to organize themselves so they can be successful. When organizations get a little further along in the maturity curve in terms of innovation, sometimes their mix of issues may change. So for example, like a, a Sears or a, the Sears at one point and not as innovative as it used to be, or, and it's, you know, Amazon is at the top of the heap. You know, uh, and let's just talk about Sears. At some point, they may have lost their conviction. You know, they may be victims of their own success and say, well, you know, uh, it's just, you know, our current businesses are very uh, uh, successful. Our current businesses are doing just great. So maybe we don't need to change as much. Maybe we think that we're a lot more innovative than we, than we can be. So these are some of the th factors I think are important for leaders to be cognizant of, aware of, uh, as they're thinking about change, especially when they're trying to do something novel and big and uh, move up the innovation uh, curve. But that's not uh, the whole story. Again, I'm here in this white space. Let me kind of move this down. That's not the whole story. There's a few other things that can always uh, get in the way. So why do we not always reach our aspirations or our potential? Well, let me give you an easy formula to kind of look at that. And I call this the, uh, or this is called the performance formula. So the performance formula states that our performance, you know, how our actual outcomes are our potential minus our interferences. So our actual outcomes are uh, our strengths minus those things that can get in the way. And this is from uh, a gentleman, his name is Tim Galway, and he proposed this in his book, The Inner Game of Work, came out uh, several decades ago, but I still think it's relevant. And he started out, he was a tennis coach. 
and he went got into went from there into executive coaching. He started out as a tennis coach, and he noticed that his athletes could have great potential, great in practice, but uh, they might have issues in actual competition. And he thought about, well, they have so much uh, potential, you know, and what are the interferences? And often those interferences would be mental. Sometimes they would be physical. Their conditioning wasn't enough. Sometimes emotional. They couldn't handle their emotional roller curve of competition, things like that. But he started to extrapolate. Uh, that's the best part of it. Very effective. Can you please go on mute? The things that might be getting in the way. So this is a very simple. The doc, could you please mute your phone? This is a very simple way to look at uh, interferences. David, do you have a question? or? Sorry, no. I was just uh, asking for folks to go on mute. Okay, thanks. So uh, these are some common uh, innovation interferences, simple way to look at it. Uh, Victor, when you take his assessment, you'll find very detailed interferences, but these are some common examples. You can have poor or weak networks. So remember the uh, slide that, uh, that uh, Victor just put up, had the triangles and the nodes going to the different uh, areas? Well, think about uh, innovator cannot innovate within a vacuum. They need to be uh, aware of what's going on in the environment. They will do best if they uh, collaborate with others. Bala talked about the fact that they, in the uh, culture of Silicon Valley, that they uh, like to share and they don't have uh, 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 non-compete agreements, things like that. They need to have good networks. The other is a lack of common innovation language or processes. So we all have to have the same page and kind of understand it's like as an organization, if we say, hey, let's innovate or let's be innovative. We need to have a common understanding of what that is uh, as an organization. Otherwise, people are a little fuzzy about it. Uh, in uh, Japan, they have a proverb and the proverb is if you ask 10 people, uh, you'll get 10 different opinions. So I, I challenge you, maybe think about this within your team or in your organization, ask for their definition of innovation. You'll probably come up with 10 or eight and a half different expressions of innovation. So sometimes it's good to have a conversation about that. When we say we're trying to be more innovative, what is it exactly? So the other would be poor or weak tools, you know, uh, project management tools, poor or weak culture we, we talked about, and then uh, wrong talent. You know, Kodak was one of the most innovative companies in the United States uh, several decades ago before the digital transformation. They were well known for making very great film, you know, for film for cameras. Now everything's digital. And there's a lot of reasons why they couldn't uh, make the turn and uh, be a bigger player uh, today in the digital world. But one of the biggest reasons was be uh, likely because most of their key senior leaders were uh, film experts, not digital experts. So how it, you know, it's hard for somebody who's an expert in one area to really lead if you're going to uh, a new uh, generation of, uh, of technology or a different area. So you gotta make sure you have the right talent on. And then lastly would be leadership. And I wanna take a little bit deeper dive on this one. So leadership, Across the board, the, it's the thread that runs through the whole success or failure of any innovation is leadership. Because you can have all the systems, you can have all the, you know, everything that manifests itself within your organization uh, either exists or doesn't exist, works or doesn't work because of leadership. You have the right people on the bus or not because of leadership. You have the right strategic focus uh, or not based on leadership. It's the whole thing. So I think it's really important for us to look at uh, leadership interferences. And I'll look at a couple here uh, with you. And let me move over here. Let's see, move this down. So here, let's look at some common interferences that I see, because I work with leaders, uh, all sorts of different industries uh, and different uh, different industries uh, all across the world, actually. Um, and But here's some that I see. So one is uh, fear of making a mistake. 
uh, not listening to hearing the insights from others. They've got kind of tunnel vision or you know, around their ears. Uh, they're too busy with the tactical. They're getting very busy. Like right now, many leaders uh, are consumed with the issues around uh, COVID and that's getting them to focus on very important things, but it might be taken away from their uh, uh, vision of other things that may be more important or strategic as we go along. Uh, poor organization, uh, poor communication of their vision. They may doubt the creativity of their team. Uh, they might have a, the old style of leadership, which is command and control. It's like, do what I tell you versus kind of some of the factors that Victor described. Uh, being a poor developer of talent, uh, quick to change uh, direction, uh, focus on optimization versus disruption, meaning just let's get better and better at what we already know versus branching out and being disruptive. Quick to say why that won't work. Uh, permissive of an unhealthy internal competition. You know, you, maybe you've got one business group is working at odds of another business group and being tolerant of that. And then uh, fear of new technology. Sometimes uh, leaders, you know, very senior leaders, they cannot pursue uh, technology that they don't feel comfortable with, or they may be a little hesitant about it. So those are, those are ones that's certainly not an exhaustive list. But uh, these are ones that I encounter uh, frequently and uh, encourage you to think about. So uh, Debbie and Bala, uh, if you're in this white space, uh, are you guys in this white space at this moment? Uh, yeah, uh, Gary, can you just do a small favor? Can you refresh your page and then turn on the follow? So that way we can come on in. Okay, so I just refreshed. Refresh the page and then bring your... Uh, and I'll hit follow. Yeah, follow and then bring that. Where did my slide go? Yeah, slide, if you can just bring on your... So just as, so you can see Susanna's here, uh, you got uh, Debbie there and Bala. Pull this over here. Mm -hmm. You can see that all of us are in this space together. So this is very simple. This is not really a, exactly collaboration, but can show you some of the potentials. So what I'd like for you guys to do is maybe go over here and select a shape. Uh, could be a circle, could be whatever, but make a little note next to, I'll give you, six votes so you make six shapes and you can put those uh, on next to the number or next to the line that you think is uh, most important uh, for innovation or might be uh, common inter uh, leadership interferences can you get those on top of there yeah, uh, I think they may have to change the color. So it's black uh, background. Yeah, you will need to change the color of your shapes. So when I do it, <laughs> I usually like to do it on the white space first and then drag it over. So Gary, I don't want to give away all my six words. I'm going to give you only four. Is that fine? That is just fine. <laughs> awesome. I can't see. Can you guys change the colors of yours? I can't see the colors. Uh, yeah, we can just. Looks like we might have a vote for a poor developer of talent. Well, might have been someplace else. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, okay. So fear of making a mistake, not listening to others, too busy with the tactical, seem to be getting some uh, votes. And maybe within your own uh, group, you can be thinking about uh, ones that you see with uh, you, yourself as a leader uh, or with, uh, yeah, fear of making a mistake is a big one uh, for yourself or for your, your team. So 
Also, you know, uh, other collaborators in here. So Debbie's saying one, six, and nine. So fear of making mistake, doubts creativity of the team, and nine, quick to change direction. Yeah, it doesn't stick with things long enough. If you have other ones, you can add a, a sticky note uh, on there. Like Debbie did, she did a sticky note. But the, re uh, so I, I use this white space because Debbie, uh, not Debbie, but uh, Susanna will be walking you through a, using this uh, white space, uh, a little bit more detailed way of uh, using um, uh, collaboration. But you can kind of see how people can put their, their ideas in here. New ones, false sincerity. I want to seem customer centric. False sincerity, that's interesting. I don't know, Debbie, if that one was yours, but one thing that I see with leaders when they, they, they seem falsely sincere in your ideas. They say, oh, that's a great idea. Come back with a plan. Then somebody will go and they'll spend a week or a month coming back with a plan. They come back with the plan and uh, the person says, yeah, that's not exactly what we're looking for. Well, at the very beginning, they already knew that they didn't really like that idea. What they didn't have, have was the courage to say, hey, let's talk about it. That seems like a kind of half-baked idea. How do we have a conversation to make that a fully baked idea? Awesome. Susanna said uh, 10, 11, 3, and 1. So 10 is focus on optimization versus disruption. Yeah. 11, quick to say why that won't work. Three, too busy with the tactical and one fear of making a mistake. Yeah. You know, the whole thing about innovation is we're going into the unknown. So there will be risk because where uh, innovation is going from one level to another level. We're dramatically more effective with our customers. We're going into a new market. Uh, we're dramatically more efficient, something that we haven't done before. So by definition, that's a lot riskier going from one level to another level than fixing, which is we're at one, fixing is we're at one level and then we're moving up to another level. So that's predictable. We know how to do that. There's no risk involved, but yeah. Cool. Very good. Oh, asking for ROI at the early stages itself. Yes, it takes time for these things to play out. And so Gary, can you just zoom up so you can just see even more, I think, if you go to the... No, yeah, further. Yeah, I can't. Hold okay, on. okay, okay. I think this is good. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Well, very good. So these are uh, now you've got. I put up thirteen. You've got uh, several others to consider. But think about uh, for yourself uh, and for your team. What are your uh, potential interferences? You know, leadership, as a leader, uh, if we uh, don't take care of these uh, interferences, we're gonna have issues. But they also show up at the team level and they show up at the organization level. And an easy way for you to think about it is thinking about, you know, what's our actual performance and thinking about what's our potential strengths. We didn't really talk about strengths all that much, but also look about what are the potential interferences? You can do that for yourself as a leader. You can do that with your team. And you can do it even more formally by taking some sort of uh, assessment, uh, organizational assessment like Victor described, or by going through some of the 360 uh, workshops that Bala can tell you a little bit more about. So that's what I've got prepared. Good luck to you. This is where I leave you. And uh, I hope you found this uh, to be uh, uh, interesting and valuable. Awesome. So Gary, just one uh, housekeeping. Can you download the image and then share it with us offline? So that's going to be sent yes, to Imran, just in case it. the team wanted to. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gary. I love that presentation. It was, I've heard parts of it before. And every time I do, I think there's something new that I take away and the list grows because we have great participants who add their input. Uh, and thank you for, uh, allowing us to have a little fun in the whiteboard, the collaborative space. So next up, we have Susanna. But before I bring Susanna on, I just wanted to check 
Um, if there are any questions, again, please feel free to put them in the chat window. Um, Imran, again, not sure if you can communicate back with me, but I really would love for the forum in the auditorium to be represented and to hear their questions. Uh, is it, if it's possible to ask a couple questions of the group, please do, and then ping me and we'll just listen to those live. Um, if not, you know, by all means, even while you're in the auditorium on your mobile devices, you can join and chat with us and send your questions as well. Even while you're watching, just remember if you would to mute the mic so we don't get any interference. Okay, so let's move on now. We have kind of a fun um, and very, I think, experiential session with one of the best at what she does, Susanna Childers. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to you now to work on um, the, the challenges that we will be looking at and also the design thinking, the starting uh, points of the design thinking exercise. Awesome. So, uh, Debbie, how long has uh, Susanna got? 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes. Yep. Uh, you okay. may hear a ding, a little bit of a, like a hotel bell. That will be <laughs> me in the background, uh, letting you know that you have five minutes and then, and then two minutes. Okay. Well, thank you. This is, this is fascinating. I love how, uh, oh, I know Bala and Debbie selected this on purpose, but how uh, Victor and Gary's um, sessions filled into this. What we're going to talk about today, let me share my screen here with you. Should be able to see that now. Are we seeing, uh, yeah, the design thinking? So my name is Susanna Childers. I am on the East Coast of the United States in North Carolina. Um, we have in the uh, Research Triangle Park area here, we have a lot of the same characteristics as Paula mentioned around Silicon Valley and uh, a lot of technology. We're one of the major campuses for IBM and SAS and uh, Cisco. So lots of uh, technology going on here on the East Coast and innovation. Um, my company is called AHA. I founded it 23 years ago. We work with companies all over the world to help them. So we're facilitators of the innovation process. So with Innovation Minds, I'm one of the master facilitators. And what we do is we help bring teams together to connect with each other, with their customers, to create new innovations and transform how they work, looking for those AHA moments, um, if you will. I have a background in both customer experience, user research, um, as well as extensive background in creative problem solving and design thinking, which is what we're here to talk with you about today and how design thinking gives you a process. So um, Victor and Gary talked about the aptitudes and capabilities that are needed for innovation, to drive innovation. One of the things would be to have tools and process along with common language, and that's what an entire comprehensive platform can bring you, such as that that innovation minds bring together. Design thinking, um, you may be more or less familiar with this concept, um, but it really has its roots in creative problem solving, which is um, was founded back in the, the 60s. Um, Sid Parnes and Alex Osborne uh, worked in the advertising field and had the question of, can people, um, can, can creativity be learned? Is there, or is it just you have it or you don't. And what they found is there are lots of different kinds of thinking styles and a process that can be replicated. People can build their ability to, to be creative and to innovate. From that early work, um, I, back in, up into about the 90s, of uh, IDEO came out with their design thinking process. So applying the creative problem solving process specifically to design and creativity. And the definition is that it is a process for creative problem solving and creating, and it focuses on the human center. So it's all about the, the human behind it. So it applies whether you're in technology or human resources, organizational work, any kind of area where you need to innovate and create. Um, it's really about looking at the humans behind that process. So, whoop, whoop, don't go too fast. So design thinking at its heart is a nonlinear, iterative process that teams use to understand their users, to challenge their assumptions, redefine their problems, and create innovative solutions, moving them all the way into prototyping and testing. So there's a lot of variations of this and some, and some standard exercises. There are design sprints to go really fast on a focus topic and a broader kind of philosophical approach to use design thinking. So let's look at what that looks like, and then we're going to pretty quickly get in and practice the first part of this. 
The stages of design thinking begins with empathizing. This is about understanding your users, putting, putting yourself in their shoes and knowing kind of what they want, what their challenges are. What is it that you're trying to create? From there, you get into the definition stage. And we're going to focus my portion of the talk on that. So defining is really around articulating the right problem. What is the challenge to be solved? Where are, where are we now and what is it that we're trying to innovate around? From there, you move into the ideation phase, which is what most people think about in terms of creativity, coming up with lots of ideas um, and expanding that. And then moving into prototyping. So the best way to get feedback on an idea is to have something, a physical something, a written something, a website for people to react to, give feedback so that you can learn, iterate, and build. And that's really where I think it was um, Victor who talked about agile thinking, where those kinds of um, and lean processes come in building quick prototypes, learning, moving into that testing, getting feedback. And as I mentioned, it's iterative. You're kind of always looping through this process as you continue to build and drive your innovation. Innovation Minds, um, and, and where I'm so excited to be partnering with them, creates a visual and collaborative social space for the all participants in an organization, organization to come together and starting with um, empathizing doing things like facilitated process, surveys, 360 assessments, moving into defining that, having challenge management and program set up into ideation where there's idea management tools. Bala can tell you and Debbie can tell you about the um, AI engine that's behind it, providing spaces for people to work collaboratively, which we know is important, getting into prototyping so that we have vision boards and event management, project management process in there built in and then all the way into testing, because I, uh, as both Gary and Victor referred to, if you don't do something with it, it's just an idea. So we want to get those things out into market, having the KPIs, having insights and feedback management um, looped around that. So let's look at what um, of one piece of that is. Assuming you know who it is that you're, you're working for, what um, your, your market is, we'll talk a little bit more first about this definition stage, so this defined stage. Because when you think about innovation and problem solving, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. And I think that's when, uh, where a lot of people maybe find themselves in a trap. So we want to shift into some new kinds of thinking and give people new processes and tools to do that. When we're looking at the definition stage, um, this is really about articulating and uh, defining the problem. Really, two steps. The first step is stating the challenge, the vision, or the problem to solve. What's the goal, the wish, the objective? What is it that you want to change? So it can start with fixing something broken or having a vision towards some potential future, something that is in your imagination. Then what we want to do is flip those questions and rephrase them so that we can work um, and to ideate against those. Thinking about phrases like, how might we? In what ways might be? What might be all the ways? What we're trying to do here is create an open and generative, not a can we or can't we, or even a how do we as much. We want to think about might. What that does is it, um, in, in the English language, is generates open possibilities and lots of possibilities. Because when we're ideating in that um, stage, we want to find lots of answers so that we can get to those ideas that are on the edge. I think one of Bala's um, pictures in his opening showed that really nicely. So we want to keep it plural. We want lots of possibilities. That's why I gave myself the title of creator of possibilities. That's what I'm all about, is trying to help people see what might be possible. Because it's really around what is the right question. I just have always loved this quote. The wise man doesn't give the right answers or person, but they pose the right question. And then we can start to find different kinds of solutions. So we're reframing these challenges or these problems or a barrier into questions to be solved. And that changes our perspective. Therefore, stepping into that empathizing uh, role, that empathic role where we're seeing the landscape from the position of the stakeholder, the organization, the customer. We're thinking about reframing these questions, these how might we, HMW, how might we, um, or in what ways might we, um, thinking about who, what, when, where, and how. We want it open-ended, not yes-no kinds of questions. So that's what we're going to play with a little bit today. Um, a little teeny introduction on design thinking. One of the things that we do is offer training on this. So 
through Innovation Minds and you know, love to get connected if you want more on this. And fabulously, we're able to do it digitally now. I love the tools that, um, that are available um, to do this remotely. Um, while I love to travel, it's nice also to be able to be connected from wherever we are. Because what we want to get to is this powerful question that's gonna drive in, um, innovation. Powerful questions are things that are thought provoking, that they challenge your assumptions, they generate energy and excitement, they focus, so they're both generating energy and focusing inquiry and reflection. They get to that deeper meaning, that heart space um, that really is why are we here, what are we doing, and what are we trying to innovate for, and then it evokes related questions. We often start our sessions, uh, workshops with teams where we're really just focusing on the questions and what are the questions behind the questions and getting to those layers of, of why. So we're gonna start a little bit today with doing a practice around that. So I'm going to, in the chat, invite you into a whiteboard in just a moment. I'm going to switch my share to a, uh, a whiteboard that we're gonna use to play with this. And this will be a tool that while this particular whiteboard is not yet, it will be integrated into the um, Innovation Minds platform where you'll have the ability to collaborate right in there. Those of you who are online, and we probably can't get everybody, um, you're gonna come in to this board and we're going to um, work together on this. So what we're gonna do in this little session, if I can zoom in here, is all you're gonna need to do is, I will give you the instructions, you're gonna follow around and you're gonna help frame this idea. So we've talked about the, this design thinking framework, we've talked about the power of questions, we're gonna work on this creative challenge and frame some how might we questions so that we can turn it back over to Bala and do some idea solution around this. We're gonna focus on this challenge about the return to work. So am I framing that right, Bala? How do we yeah, get people exactly. back to work? Exactly. Yep. I think uh, Pakistan is in the very interesting time frame now. So they're going to be inviting back all the employees and students back to the campus. So this is a timely need. If you're able to come up with that great idea, why not? It can become a next billion dollar business for some of the entrepreneurs who are attending here. Yeah. So we're going to focus first. So thinking about the return to the return to work, the return to school, being able to have people who are not in lockdown, all separated in our homes coming back together. We're gonna to start on this area of the green stickies. And in a minute, I'm gonna put a, a link in the chat. If you are interested and have the connectivity on your computer to come in, what you're going to do is we're gonna each click in these sticky notes and I'll ask uh, uh, my Innovation Mind partners to also come in and do this as well. And think together about what are the um, expected challenges, barriers or concerns that you have about this. What are the problems right now? Just focusing on the green area. What are the things that are challenging about this topic of the return to work? So you're going to click, double click right on the sticky note. It will highlight there and you'll be able to type um, your, your challenges or concerns or questions just in the green sticky. Um, so here comes the link. You can't probably take all 60 or 80 people who are watching, but um, Come on in with me. You'll come in as a uh, visitor. Uh, you'll get a, a visiting animal and you'll be able to start populating these green sticky notes. I see some folks coming in and I think we might've had a question. Is there, is there a question that, or a hand raised? Somebody wants to, maybe that was just somebody wanting to come in. If you're on the Zoom, all you need to do is click on that link that'll bring you in as a visiting animal. I see we have a, a bear and a cow and a sea lion coming in. So go ahead and just all you have to do is take your mouse. I'm going to summon you so that you are where I am on this board. You can just start double click and start populating those ideas. What are some of the challenges around getting back to work, bringing people back to work? And if somebody, if you aren't able to come in um, here and you want to put some in the chat, we can enter those from the chat as well and we can have you contribute in that way. So what we want to do is find lots of ways for everybody to collaborate. I see a few ideas coming in. I see um, strategies are objective oriented.
all you need to do if you're coming in, just click that link. We can have a few more people in here if you're interested in trying out this collaborative tool. Just double click on here. Other challenges in coming back to work. And again, you can put them in the chat as well. We'll just give you a, a few minutes. One of the things I can do here is set a timer. So we'll just take maybe two more minutes to do this. We'll run our timer down. All the ideas you can think of in two minutes, we can probably get pretty far. Go ahead and add a few more. Anybody else wants to put some more in? Yeah, Imran, in the auditorium, you can encourage the participants to come onto this whiteboard if they are having point of view. This is the teamwork, right? So they can feel free to come to the whiteboard and share their perspective. Because I would say this is more like a warming up exercise. We are getting into the real ideation right after that. Okay, we're just going to take 30 seconds more on here. And then we're gonna we're gonna just suppose that we've had some then conversation around these and what um, what the most important uh, ones are. Read through those if you're in the board. If you're not in the board, I'm gonna zoom in a little more so that you can see the ones we've come up with. Because what we're gonna do here in about 10 seconds is we're going to flip these, as you can see, into these how might we statements. So picking some of these challenges that you see here. We have things like health and safety concerns, communicating the expectations. We have children attending school who might be having school from home. We have um, what kind of testing needs to happen, supply chain issues, habits formed while at home are gonna shift again, employee safety, um, physical distancing. We're gonna flip this over because I'm getting my warning that we need to keep going and we wanna get this into that generative question area. So let's come over to the yellow stickies. Those of you who are in the board with me, thinking about those particular challenges and problems, we're now gonna flip those and we're gonna rewrite those problems. We're not gonna worry about voting right now just from an efficiency standpoint. Um, we're gonna come into these yellow stickies and we're gonna flip those into how might we statements. So you're gonna wanna click on a yellow sticky and you can just shorthand it and say HMW, how might we um, uh, help uh, families with school challenges. So, so you're reframing that. The problem was the kids have to go to school, the parents, how do we do it? How might we help families with school challenges? So go ahead, um, those of you who are in the board with me, let's just take a couple of minutes and flip a few of these around, um, convincing organizations to change for good. Go ahead and grab a couple of those and reframe those. How might we have Who's the person? What's the action you want them to do? And what's the overall goal? All you need to do is just double click on those yellow stickies and we'll be able to capture a few different reframes. So. I got extra, I got, I got extra letters in here. So we won't worry about spelling in here right now. That doesn't count. Um, you can see how we can pretty quickly, we did this for like minutes only here, um, reframing these as a question. Um, you know, the things that came to my mind are how can we help families with school challenges? How might we reassure employees that, that we are being safe? 
How might we convince an organization to change? How might we use technology to enable the workplace to be healthy and still enjoyable? Um, you can see how we flip some of these just in minutes to be some generative questions that we can come up with some solutions around. The next stage in the design thinking process, now that we've reframed our question, and I'm gonna let Bala pick his favorite question because he's gonna move us in our next segment into doing some ideation around that particular challenge. So, um, I, Bala, I don't know if you've got a favorite in there. Do you have one you wanna have people focus on? Oh yeah, so why don't we talk about how might we use the technology to enable the workplace? So yeah. technology is going to play a vital role, right? That could be one. And yeah. also, I would say, Susanna, even though we are expecting employees and students to come back to the institution, still a majority of them are not going to be mentally, emotionally ready to come back based on that safety and healthy reasons, right? So how do we support them in parallel? so that they're not going to be feeling guilty or anything else. All my colleagues are working and I'm working from home. Right. So we have to support those remote workforce in parallel to focusing the folks coming back to work. Yeah, so you can see how we started from something that was a problem, which is yep. not like, er, into framing. How might we? Like, oh, how might we create new policies? How might we support families? How might we use technology? Those all become challenges that your organization can get behind and you can innovate and iterate on those. So that's what um, I wanted to, to share with you today. Bala, I think you're gonna pick it up from here. I'll stop that share. Those of you who are in the board can play around in there if you want to, you can't really break it. Um, and Bala is gonna take us into an ideation section next, yeah? Yeah, awesome, so this is great. Uh, Susanna, so within, uh, how long it took? Like 15 minutes or maximum 20 minutes, right? Within that, you're I, able I to cover the entire thing. concept of design thinking, brought the participants into the team collaboration. Wow, this is really impressive. Yeah, and if we slowed, you know, I wouldn't recommend thinking you should do the whole, you know, solve a problem in 10 minutes, yeah. but you can get pretty far with a little focus effort and the right tools. So, um, you know, if we slow down and reflect on it a little bit, we're gonna go deeper and deeper and, and get to some really powerful, juicy kinds of things that then we can flip and solve. So. Thanks for the opportunity to share and let's see what ideas we can come up with, Paul. Awesome, thank you. So Debbie, do you have any announcement or any quick? No, Paula, please continue. Awesome, so thank you, Susanna. Now that we are really thought through and also brainstormed and discussed, what are all the challenges that we may focus right after this? particular workshop. So there are so many good ideas, right? And also challenges out there. Rather than boiling the ocean, we would like to pick two or three things that uh, as a team, we are all coming together, to use the technology and see how we may be able to solve these top two or three challenges. That's what we are going to do part of the ideation here. So when we are getting into the solution, the very first rule is that even before we come up with solution, you should know what challenge you are trying to solve, right? That's what Susanna has walked us through in a beautiful way. Now that everybody or every one of us clearly understanding what we are going to solve, let's get into the solution. So when you are coming up with the idea, ask the right questions before you're going to be innovating it. So we already talked about how might we. So there are so many other questions like what if, why not, and all those things, but from a solution perspective, that is the first step. The second step is uncover the unexpected areas. So that is really, really important. So if you re recall in the beginning when we are talking about innovation, try to form your own path rather than going through the same uh, what is the road somebody has already set it for you, right? So it's more like road not taken. And the another one I would say is, when you're coming up with solution or ideas, don't just come up with one and then think like that is the best one. Try to create a lot of opportunities and a lot of ideas, and then try to have the conversation and bring the external perspective, talk to your friends, the more and more you're having options, you may be able to narrow down the best of the best. 
So if you're going to be just having only one solution, you're going to be stuck with it, whether it's going to be good or not so good. And then again, end of the day, if you want to go fast, you can, you can go alone. But if you want to go far, you have to go with your team, right? So from that perspective, the more and more you are bringing in your friends and the colleagues, what they think and how you'll be able to polish it, tweak your idea, that's where the real success comes. Otherwise, when you are going and building your own idea, end of the day, when you're going to go live, there are going to be so many constraints, blind spots that you will not be able to think through from an individual mind perspective. So go and talk to your friends. And then finally, this is really, really important. When you're going to be coming up with ideas, don't try to make it so obvious. The reason is not only people are going to be inspired by it and also invited by that idea, and very easily big fish will be able to eat the small fish in the sense you come up with an idea that's pretty obvious, it's easily impl implementable. Keep in mind, Microsoft is out there, Amazon is out there, Google and Facebook, they're going to be easily taking your idea and then they're going to be implementing on a global basis. So when you're coming up with the idea, think from that perspective. I want to come up with a new innovative solution that is sustainable and also profitable and relevant to this time frame, but at the same time, not replicatable. So these are all the rules that we are going to follow here. So with that, are you all ready for the fun now? So folks, can you just open up your browser, go and type in cgi.innovationminds.com. And uh, we would proudly announce that uh, this is the exclusive portal for CGI innovation submit and as well as, as we move forward. You may be able to use this platform as a one-stop shop for all your ideation, challenges, event. So it's a complete solution for managing anything, everything related to the innovation. And then I would say that, thank you Imran for working with us and partnering with us to make it happen. I know it's a huge investment from both of our side, but end of the day, this is going to be a huge, huge enablement, not only for your mission vision, for each and every one of the participants who are going to be benefiting from this summit. So having said that, can you all go to your browser, preferably Chrome, uh, it doesn't matter, but Chrome is always the, uh, what is that, the best one, seamless one, I would say. Type in cga.innovationminds.com and use your email as the username, all lowercase, uh, based on the GDPR security guidance, uh, the email is case sensitive. Please use your email as a user ID. And then the password is going to be GIES20 all caps if you are not talking can you please go on mute awesome so i'll just give one more minute here debbie can you ask the team whether they are all able to log into the tool are there any technical issues? CGI.innovationminds.com, use your email, all lowercase, and then GS, the password is going to be GIES20 for each and every one of the participants here. Imran, are there any issues from the auditorium there? Imran, can you unmute yourself? Well, we, we, we just announced the dinner, so we have loaded it. Yeah, okay, good. So the reason is the whole exercise, the rest of the 20 minutes, we are going to be doing real time in the portal. Ensure that you are able to log into the portal. Now, after you did that, Sir, will you please? Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. So 
what we are going to do is uh, with the help of Susan I just now we came up with top two or three how might be challenges right we are going to be using the portal and trying to come up with the ideas on our work how can we solve these three challenges how might we leverage the technology for modernizing and also ensuring that the workplace is really ready to keep the workforce safety and healthy hygiene yet enjoyable what are the technology enablement we can do that is one thing and the second one is still majority of the employees students are going to be working remote or studying remote how do we really balance their interest as well the third thing is what is the role that hr is going to play in this new normal so these are the three solutions that we are going to come up with and then the way how it is going to work is we are all going to be getting into three breakout sessions the first breakout session i'm going to be guiding you all and then the second one is going to be imran and then the third one is going to be debbie so when you're all going to the breakout session go to this portal and then go to the ideas and in my breakout session i'll be asking each and every one of the participants to go to idea one and then go to that let's collab whiteboard and then the second one imran you are going to be asking your participants to go to idea two ask them to go to let's collab within the ideas idea two and debbie you're going to be picking idea three and then when participants are going to be in the let's collab ask them to look at the sample idea that we have put together for primarily priming our conversation okay i'm not asking each and every one of the participants to follow or steal the same idea and then come up with our own solution it's more for priming so we just put some sample ideas how we can solve these challenges use the whiteboard have the brainstorming conversations maybe one or two minutes after all those conversations are done ask each and every one of the participants to go and submit their own idea so they have to go back to the portal go to the idea submit their own idea so when they are submitting the idea it should be pretty simple what is the problem they are solving what is the solution what is the title i think that should be fine so that is what we are going to do so i'm going to be sending each and every one of us to the breakout session now so when we bala, do that yeah bala i would yeah. recommend before you send everybody if you can uh show them where they're going to be landing i think that would be very helpful yeah okay that's a good point so as you can see here, I have logged into cja.innovationminds.com and then you'll be seeing CGI Innovation. Click on that site. When you come to this one, this is an exclusive site that we have rolled out for CGI Innovation. So within that, go to Ideas. And then the group one should go to this idea one, let's call that. And then the group two should be going to idea two and then the group three should go to their own stuff so that is what we are going to do so coming back to this one let me just tell you something pretty interesting here we want each and every one of you to come up with the idea but let's not worry about is it a good idea or crazy or wacky it is just the kind of having fun right so don't hold back try to come up with anything that's coming on your mind and then you'll be having your sweet time to go and revisit it polish it and also make it much more comprehensive for the sake of this exercise try to share whatever the idea comes to your mind right now right here the reason is after that ideation is over there is going to be a small contest in the real time and as well as online we are all going to be voting for the best idea and uh, who knows if your idea is going to be the winner you're going to be walking away with 50 dollars amazon card so it is going to be pretty impressive don't hold back don't worry about being judged or um, my idea is good or not or anything else all we are asking encouraging you is to go and play around the whiteboard and get some ideas inspiration go back to the idea submit your own and make it pretty simple it is all going to be just 10 minutes. Are you ready, Imran? Are you ready, Debbie? Can you just do the breakout session now? Yes. 
Yes, please. Okay, awesome. I'm going to be starting the breakout session here. Manually, right? Three rooms. Eight room. Okay. I'm going to be giving breakout after eight minutes, okay? And then 60 seconds. Options is eight minutes, and then you're going to be getting the reminder, okay? So I'm also going to be making sure that breakout session is me, so that is okay. And then uh, Imran is going to be the second one. Breakout, break, okay. And then I'm just ensuring that Imran, you are in the second one. And then Debbie is already third. And I'm going to be joining the number one. Good, so what is going to happen is when I'm clicking the button, everybody will be split into your own breakout session. And you're also going to have all the conversation and then you can go to idea one, idea two and idea three, use the whiteboard, have some inspiration, go and submit your own ideas and then you'll be getting a reminder one minute before. So this is totally eight minutes and then you're all going to be coming back to the main room in another eight minutes good that's it so you're all going to be getting into the Hello, team one. Can you all hear me? You can go and unmute your uh, mic so that we can have all the conversations. See, in the breakout session, we are asking each and every one of you to come and have the fun. So, Imran, are you still there in the breakout session one? Can some of you unmute your mic and then um, just announce yourself, please? That way we can get it going. Please unmute your, uh, has to unmute. Okay, Shahid, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so Shahid, uh, good to see you. Uh, can you go to your portal and then go to that idea one? Sure. First of all, are you able to successfully log in? Yes, I have logged in. And just okay. to make sure that I'm in the right position, uh, right location, idea one is code 19 and technology at work. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right? right. So when you go to that idea, uh, team, you can also follow me here, okay? Go to that idea one, and then you see something called Let's Collab. Just go and click on the Let Us and Collab. Yeah, I don't see that. Hold on. Okay, got it. That's cool. Okay, so uh, there is one thing that you can do. If you yeah, go to the top right corner, there is something called follow. If you just look into the top right corner, follow. Yeah, Shahid, I can see that. Awesome. So are you able to see my mouse move? You can see that yeah. I am admin. No. Should I click on that? Follow? Uh, yeah, uh, no, I think uh, you, you're there. So can we just ask cannot... each and every one of other participants, uh, Aliyar, Atika, Dr. Tayeb, for y'all, can you all please unmute yourself? Here you can unmute. So that way we can have a conversation. For y'all, so Sidra also, Sidra, Noreen, can you all unmute yourself? So 
So Fariel, can you hear us? Uh, yes, sir, I can hear you. Uh, so are you able to go to this? Let's collab. You're able to follow the steps, right? Okay. So all you have to do is go to cga.innovationminds.com and you're able to successfully log in there, right? Uh, no, I'm not able to log in there because I've entered my email address, but they're saying that uh, your email is not linked with the account. Okay, okay. So uh, maybe why don't we do one thing? So whoever has logged into this platform, it is okay. Maybe for real, we will take care of it a little later because we have very short time. So Shadi sure. and team. So what we are going to do here is the challenge at hand is that how do we enable our workplace using all the emerging technologies that we have to be safer and healthy and hygiene, right? So recently we did a huge research with the help of Stanford and as well as UC Berkeley. And then we have come up with some of the ideas like it. So when the employees or students are getting into the building, why don't we make everything as mobile accessible? So you don't have to touch anything, you'll be able to get in. And then the same way everywhere we are going to be building that smart buildings. And also if you are able to make all this interaction with the physical thing using voice or gesture, you don't have to touch anything. You're going to be feeling safe and as well as hygiene, right? The same way autonomous cleaning solution. Yeah. So there are so many things. And then Shahid, why don't we do one thing? Just double click on that canvas and you'll be able to see a sticky note you can just double click and yeah, then just start typing in, okay? What could be your idea? So I'm going to be adding some idea here. Use Amazon Echo to voice activate the systems. So are you able to see my type in here? Amazon, use Amazon Echo to voice activate the systems. Team, can you all see it, right? Oh, okay, I can also see Shahid, voice activated devices so that employees don't need to touch, awesome. And anybody else is there in the site here? So this is an opportunity for you to feel free and then no worries about anything, okay? This is your platform and this is where you're going to be collaborating with your teammates as we move forward in this startup ecosystem. Let us know if you're seeing any kind of usability issues or anything else. Okay, so Shahid, the whiteboard is primarily for having the conversation. Now, can you all go back to the ideas page here? If you go to that, in the whiteboard, click on that CGI, that logo or the back button and then go to ideas okay and then within the ideas there is something called submit your idea on the side click on that submit your idea and then just type in your idea shahid you're typing something right use voice activated just submit your idea who knows yours could be a winner okay I'm just trying to look at where is that. So uh, are idea. you into the idea screen now? If you look into yes, the I'm top, back menu, here. top uh, menu, there is ideas, right? Click on the top menu. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, Submit so your idea, I got it. Yeah, on the front so page. ideas and then in the right hand side, there is something called submit your idea. Okay, got it. Okay, just a simple three questions. Just, uh, okay, what is the title, idea. what is the challenge, and what is the solution? And then the same way other participants, can you all go to come out of the whiteboard or let's collab? And in the menu, top menu, you can see something called ideas. Click on that, submit your idea. Once again, I want to make sure that you're all feeling free to go and submit the idea. There is no judgment or anything else here. This is going to be the uh, work in progress, okay? As you submit your idea, you'll continuously, continuously polish it and do all those things. So don't hold back. So this is an opportunity for you to really share your point of view and your idea. So 
So we are going to be getting kicked out within 30 seconds or so. Are you all ready? Any questions? Shahid, there are other participants here in the breakout session. I'm just submitting it. Awesome. Welcome back to the main room here. We want to make sure that you're all back here. Mala, please continue with the flow because some people are struggling with login. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Uh, so uh, if they are uh, struggling, maybe we can just talk to them offline. We can take care of it later. Yeah, yeah. just continue with the flow so that everybody understands the overall process. OK, 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 awesome. So we are going to be all breakout sessions will we'll close in 10 seconds, OK? So we are going to be bringing in everyone back to this. Hey, Bawa. Yeah. So uh, we were able to do great collaboration. We had some participative people in the whiteboard. We were putting up sticky notes, but we ran out of time before being able to go to the idea portal to then put in ideas into the actual idea um, page. Uh, so can you take maybe one more minute? Why don't you ask them to go to, OK, so if they are able to see the screen, let me just share here. Yes, please. Everybody, even though you've been thrown back into the common area, what Val is going to share with you right now is you still have the portal open. So Bala is going to give you an opportunity to vie for that Amazon gift card. <laughs> OK, <laughs> team. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Click on that CGA innovation here. If you're on the Let's Collab whiteboard, all you have to do is just click the back button or uh, logo. So once you're into the main site, click here on the ideas and submit your idea. It is going to be just 30 seconds. Don't worry about your language or anything else. Just come up with a simple sentence. What is the problem you're trying to solve? Actually, there sentence. is uh, internet interruptions. So I'm, I'm going to be giving you one or two more minutes. I, some, I, I heard that somebody is having an issue with internet interruptions. Uh, internet interruption in the sense they are not able to participate in the Zoom or uh, the portal is having issues. Salma, was that you? Yeah, yeah, internet interrupted. Yes, sorry. <laughs> so again, uh, there is a $50 Amazon gift card, OK? So don't miss the opportunity. Thank you. OK, so can you do one thing? So it looks like there are two ideas here, right? Can you all go to each and every one of the idea, click on that idea, voice, and then everybody will be able to vote up to five. So if you go all the way down to that idea, it's going to be total votes. Let's go ahead and then vote how many ID, how many votes you want to give for this idea. Why is right? Ensure that you're saving it. Otherwise, you're not. OK, again, let me just walk you through. You have to go to that idea that you like. Click that idea. In the right hand side, there is something called total votes. Voting system will be there. Edit. You can give up to five votes. Save it, and then you can come back. Are you all ready there? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, Debbie, you're able to vote, right? Yes. Awesome. So. And then I just want to make sure that everybody who is participating in the portal has had an opportunity to submit an idea on their respective. Um, yeah, we have another six minutes, right? So we may have to wrap it up. OK, so you got another 10, 10 seconds for voting uh, the best idea. All you have to do is 
just look at the ideas whichever idea that you like go ahead and click the idea and then if you go to the right side tools all the way down there are total words you can vote up to 5 it is up to you how many words you want to give for that idea so i'm going to be doing the countdown one another 10 okay 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 Ten final call. Okay, beautiful. So thank you for all the hard work and teamwork. Now, Imran, I'm going to be going to the final session here. If you just go to the manage ideas, boom. So I'm able to see there are many ideas: healthy living and AR, COVID, and voice and lecture. So this is all good, right? So what I'm going to do is ascending or descending. Awesome. So the voice is the winner here. Why, Shahid? You're the winner. Okay. I think uh, that is the idea that got maximum vote. As you can see here, you got 12 votes, and then lecturer for congratulations, Shahid. Congratulations, Shahid. Yeah. Thank you. And I know that this is actually fast paced. Uh, I don't know if we are having a level playing field here, Imran, but. the whole point is that team should be getting that kind of feeling okay so tomorrow they will be able to go and play around the platform in a leisure way and all those things cool so with that so we are actually started with our uh, innovation definition and how silicon valley is really continue to have that title of silicon valley the traits and all those things and then Victor got an into the global innovation trend and then Gary did the leadership exercise so we are all walking away with the traits that we should acquire or actually continue to nurture and then Susanna did that very quick design thinking workshop of some we are able to figure out what challenges and then how we can quickly frame the how might we and right after that we got an into the ideation so as you can see here everything can be collaborated and also facilitated through this beautiful platform that Imran has uh, kind of worked with us to set it up so this is going to be the go to portal as you move forward with your summit for all your ideas collaboration and all those things so with that we are getting into the closure here devi just one or two minutes i need at the end any closing comments imran or devi Um, my closing comments are just to thank everybody so much for your participation. It was delightful to be able to present with you today and to bring along these four experts that we work very, very closely with, and that uh, Imran will have the opportunity also with CGI to work very closely with. We know you have a busy day. You have an exciting four days ahead of you. Thank you for inviting us to participate with you today. Imran, any last word? I need one minute. thank you very much bala thank you very much dabi thank you very much gary susanna uh, all the uh, speakers uh, really loved it sorry for little hiccups this was our first one but this is not the last one we're just getting started thank you very much innovation minds and this is just the beginning of an exciting journey awesome so as always just one more thing here okay yep here's to the crazy ones the misfits the rebels the troublemakers the round pegs in the square holes the ones who see things differently they're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo you can quote them disagree with them glorify or vilify them but the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things they push the human race forward and while some may see them as the crazy ones we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do So you know this is the memorial for Steve Jobs and coincidentally this was the ad really made Apple popular back in the 80s. I really love the fact that 
if you are uh, the round pegs and there are so many square holes don't worry about it you're going to be finding your own way don't lose your edge don't lose your innovative thought that is what actually keep you going and then it's going to make you as a successful entrepreneur who knows you may be able to get into that next to four billionaires list so with that i think actually we are coming to an end here so thank you all and then we will see you as we move on